source of the world's ancient civilizations, musical instruments are gifts from the gods. Historians speculate that the earliest instruments come from utilitarian objects and tools. But art is about what's new. I want you to meet one artist who is using that ancient concept to make new music. While the exact origins may not be known, scholars agree that music has been around for tens of thousands of years. It would be pretty exciting if this thing held the strings to the instrument. And has been integral to human expression in more ways than one. Primary musical instruments, in a sense of the ones that came first, have something to do with mimicking the human body. Sing and, and clap and, and thump your chest. I don't know, and I also strung it backwards, which actually is kind of interesting. And as the building techniques get more elaborate, they get further from that. But they all flow from the same place. Even without lyrics, music is a powerful force to communicate and unite. It transcends language, it transcends religion, culture, ethnicity, economic class. It, it flows through those things. When you see Joe Rowan's quirky instruments, you suspect his mission is not about the Billboard charts or Lollapalooza. And Joe Rowan's approach to music is a little weird, too. We know what a guitar or piano sounds like, but how about a kitchen appliance? Sometimes I call them uh, unlikely musical objects. You wouldn't think they'd make an instrument, a toaster, a tennis racket, a cane. Joe Rowan trained at the Berklee College of Music, but saw an opportunity to inject more creativity into the instruments he'd grown up playing. The whole problem with the store-bought instrument is that they all do the same thing. The amazing thing about these instruments is you gotta discover what is it that this one does. The thing I made, it's a double neck bass with saw blades on it and all sorts of colored bric-a-brac. Saws. And it's got an electric bass here. <laughs> Tubes. Tennis rackets. Slowly transform into something new to create new sounds. I like being in the workshop with them and watching them come to life slowly over many nights. I'll try something out and maybe that doesn't work, but what it doesn't do reveals something about what it does do. In some ways, Joe sees his instruments as a collaboration with creators he's never met. The things that I make instruments out of were designed by someone. So the mailbox that I want to make into an instrument, well, somebody made that mailbox. And so in a sense, that person and I are kind of on a journey across time. While the instruments feature a sense of the whimsical, it's not always enough. In the end, an audience judges his music on its merits. It doesn't work on everyone. It works on maybe one out of 10 or two out of 10. But there is a certain someone in the audience every night who, who's ready for it. And so I'm, I'm there for them. Me and that person are, are going somewhere together. Joe's songs don't have lyrics, but there is a message. He hopes his rebellious approach to music inspires people to seek creativity in their daily lives. There's no shortage of examples in the world 
a resilient people using the things that were available to them to make music. I've got my own spin on it and I'm putting my own stamp on it, but I think the impulse is the same. Use what's around you. You can find Joe Rowan at joerowan.com. Coming up on Backstory, dozens and dozens of letters from John Wayne Gacy to his next door neighbors, including the final message before his execution. <laughs>